Okay, so now that the presidential election is over, our attention turns to the next major factor affecting the outlook for stocks, bonds, and other investment asset classes, the fiscal cliff. Welcome Chris Hobart, president of Hobart Financial Group. It is so great to see you, Chris. How are Thanks, you? So I'm doing really well. Good Chris, to see you as well. I don't think we've seen you since your baby's been born. Yeah, it's, uh, life has changed life. dramatically. I'm sure it has. Well, congratulations <laughs> Thanks, to you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, okay, first of all, what is the fiscal cliff? We keep hearing this term bandied about. I don't think a lot of us know exactly what it means. Well, and I think that's the problem. We hear it. Uh, we know we should be scared of it, but we don't know what it means. So to break it down real simple, uh, it basically means that there's two big financial things that are going to happen the end of this year. And those two things together can be pretty nasty. The mm. first is going to be the tax code. Uh, pretty much all the tax cuts we've experienced since 2001 to today are going to disappear on us. Um, so that means that about 98% of the population is going to see a tax increase. Uh, the second thing is, it's, uh, there was a deal made about a year and a half, uh, half ago with, uh, with the budget, which means that the government at the first of this upcoming year across the board is going to have to cut the budget by $1.2 billion. That's domestic spending, that's defense spending all around. All of this coming together, it's kind of that perfect storm. Mm -hmm. Now, there, it's, it's built to be a good thing. It's meant to get every, all the, uh, the ship corrected and cut down on our deficit and all that. The problem is when it all happens at one time, it can actually slow the economy down, maybe even put us into recession. Okay, so that all being said, what does this mean to the average consumer? Uh, you know, uh, let's, let's look at it basic. Uh, if 98% of the population has a tax increase, what that means is they have less money coming home. Mm -hmm. Less money coming home means less money going out and spending on discretionary type stuff. So that's the first thing. I, you know, consumer spending makes up about two thirds of our economy. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, if the government has to cut the budget by $1.2 billion, what happens is all of a sudden there's furloughs or there, there's layoffs regarding that which then trickles into the rest of the economy. So we can start seeing more and more unemployment numbers rise. Tie those two together this time of year, it's not a pretty picture. You know, we're just recovering out of this stuff. So for the average consumer, it's, it's scary times. It means that we have to still now be concerned about where's the economy going to be going. I know. So what can we do? What should we be doing? Well, you, you know, the politicians, number one, president and the Congress, they've got to agree on this stuff. So they either have to say, look, deal with the people, uh, you know, let's go on with it. Or they can correct it and they can kind of say, you know, let's, let's focus on this. But realistically, probably the, the near-term solution is to push this out another three to six months. But again, all we're doing is kicking the can down the road. My bigger concern, Colleen, is actually going to be focused on people in or near retirement. Mm -hmm. um, those are the people that historically, you know, think back to 2000 when the market crashed and you mm -hmm. saw people on the news, I can't work anymore, yes. I, or I have to go back to work rather. 2008, I have to go back to work or, or uh, you know, my retirement plans changed. We're in that same scenario now where people are just retiring or they've just got back on their feet ready to retire, mm -hmm. and now this economy has a chance to slip down again. And people need to be very smart. What's worked in the past for investments isn't going to work going forward if this fiscal cliff happens. That's a very good point. So mm -hmm. those people, I know that there, a lot of those people are in our viewing audience right now. Mm -hmm. um, and not to toot your own horn, but maybe best to see someone like you to help them through what could be a di very difficult time. It, it, uh, yeah, that's a great point. And again, not, not to toot our horn, but people need to get advice. When, when the economy is showing signs mm -hmm. that it could actually take a pretty steep decline, have somebody help lead the way. Have somebody, and make sure that uh, the one piece of advice I'd give, make sure they're not selling you a product or something. We have a lot of people selling financial products mm -hmm. out there. Make sure whoever you're talking to is what's called a fiduciary, somebody that's legally responsible to give you the best advice. Uh, you know, you need somebody to lead you during these tough times that's not looking out for their own pocketbook as mm -hmm. well. That's critical, I think. Yeah, critical. it really is. Um, one last question to you, kind of a little mm -hmm. bit off topic as we enter this oh. shopping season and uh -huh. everybody's going crazy. Do you have one bit of advice for viewers who are watching? watching right now so that they don't go crazy and get themselves into crazy debt for Oh, well, you know, uh, I think as my wife and my mom would tell you, I'm probably not the person to advise people on how not to, not to spend money. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, the, the key is a lot of times uh, one of the favorite things is putting whatever money you're going to spend in an envelope and simply taking that to the mall. Don't use credit cards. Don't mm -hmm. use anything else. Just use the cash that you have on hand. Helps you kind of stick to a budget. Of course, if you're doing online shopping, as you guys were talking about earlier, <laughs> kind of shoots yeah, it in the foot. So, huh? <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, Chris, by the way, is offering a free copy of the latest retirement report from Hobart Financial Group to ensure a prosperous retirement. Call 704-553-0123. Again, 704 
553-0123. Call that number to get your copy. You can also send an email to info at hobartfinancialgroup.com. Info at hobartfinancialgroup.com. I'm telling you, he's the guy to go see. Chris, it's great to see you. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks. Good seeing you.